Hi, I'm Karina. Layla is my friend drawing. So let's get started with a basic fact. Every living thing needs energy. Animals, plants, and even us humans. This is because the cells and living things need energy to carry out their functions. So how do we get this energy? Well, organisms get energy by either producing their own food or consuming food. A heterotroph is an organism that can't make its own food, so has to consume it. For example, a human. Hetero meaning other and troph meaning food. An autotroph is an organism that can make its own food. Auto meaning self and troph meaning food or eat. Today we're going to focus on autotrophs and how they make their own food. So how do plants make their own food? A process called photosynthesis. All the work in photosynthesis is divided into two stages. The first stage, it all starts with energy from the sun being captured in chlorophylls and chloroplasts. Chloroplasts are organelles located in plant cells and chlorophylls are pigments which are colored chemical compounds that absorb light. It's also what gives plants and leaves color. Now, chloroplasts need to split the water molecules that they have collected through their roots. To do this, the chloroplasts use the obtained energy from the sun. Once the water has been split into its two elements, hydrogen and oxygen, the oxygen is released as a waste product since it isn't needed anymore through little pores in the plant's leaves called Stomata. The oxygen that is released is oxygen that we breathe in. On to the second stage. The plant now takes in carbon dioxide from the air. CO2 is a gas made up of one carbon molecule and two oxygen molecules. Now the chloroplast can put all the puzzle pieces together to make food. In the cell, a series of chemical reactions occurs with these raw elements, and the final product of them is a sugar molecule called glucose, which is the plant's food. By the way, the equation that represents the process of photosynthesis is as follows. Light energy plus 6CO2 plus 6H2O is C6H12O6 plus 6O2. So how do plants and animals get energy from glucose in consuming food? Well, it all happens in a process called cellular respiration. In cellular respiration, glucose and other molecules are broken down by your cells using oxygen which releases energy. Glucose is stored when it's consumed and when the cells need energy, they break down the glucose into usable energy called ATP. During the first stage, glucose molecules are broken down into smaller versions, releasing a little energy called ATP. This occurs in the cytoplasm of the cells. The second stage happens in the mitochondria, where the molecules are broken down even more using oxygen and animals and humans obtain from breathing, and ends up releasing a large amount of energy, ATP. Water and CO2 are released as waste products in animals and humans breathing. I bet now you're wondering, why are all these processes so important and how in the world are they related? To answer the first question, yes, they are related. These processes are extremely important as they keep living things alive by providing usable energy and maintaining the levels of oxygen and CO2 in the Earth's atmosphere. To the second question, they are in fact related. They are opposite processes and they depend on each other for both of them to keep running. Look at the equations for both processes. The end products for the photosynthesis equation are the starting products for the cellular respiration and vice versa. 
This is the equation for photosynthesis. This is the equation for cellular respiration. C6H12O6 glucose plus 6O2 oxygen is energy plus 6CO2 carbon dioxide plus 6H2O water. So, we hope that you learned something today from our video. Thanks for watching. Bye!